Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. Now, my first guest this morning, he descends from two of the most important names in history. He is the great, great, great grandson of Frederick Douglass, and he is the great, great grandson of Booker T. Washington. He descends from greatness, and like his ancestors, he too will leave a legacy behind him one day. Now, his life right now is driven by a mission to end modern-day slavery, also known as human trafficking, and all forms of servitude. He's down here from an invitation by the Florida Keys Coalition, speaking to some of our different churches and schools. Ken, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you, Jenna. It's great to be here with you. All right. Ken, I just mentioned your great-great-grandfather is Booker T. Washington and great-great-great-grandfather <laughs> is Frederick Douglass. Wow. Those are two names that none of us can forget. Did you feel pressure growing up to, to make a difference like your ancestors did? I, um, yes, I did feel pressure. And um, when I was younger, and I've always known that I've descended from these great, great men, and my earliest memories are when I was five years old, I, I grew up in Frederick Douglass's summer beach home on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. And there was a lot of pressure that was put on the males in the family before me to be great like Frederick Douglass and, and Booker T. Washington. And can you imagine growing up and you see your ancestors on schools, named sc schools are named for them, statues, they're on money, they're on stamps. So that can be quite a weight to carry around. So Absolutely. Yes. Now, you received a calling a couple of years ago to, to get into this line of service and to fight modern-day slavery. Tell us about this calling. In 2007, a good friend of mine who's a business associate and one of the founders of our organization, Robert Benz, handed me a, Ge a National Geographic magazine. And the cover story was 21st Century Slaves. And I looked at that headline and reacted the way I think most people do the first time they hear about the existence of human trafficking and modern day slavery. And I thought slavery had ended with the work of Frederick Douglass and the abolitionists and the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. But as I started to research the issue, I found that there were still millions of people around the world living in slavery, many living in conditions as horrific as the slavery that my ancestors endured. Mm -hmm. And I have two teenage daughters who at the time were 12 and 9 years old. And when I found that there were girls that were my daughter's ages and even younger that were forced to be sex slaves in the brothels of Southeast Asia and that the average age that a girl in this country is forced into prostitution is between 12 and 14 years old, I couldn't look my girls in the eyes and walk away and not do anything about this. Mm -hmm. And it was at that moment um, all of the groundwork and this path that I think that had been laid for me, everything came together and I, I understood that I had this platform that my ancestors had built through struggle and through sacrifice and I knew I could stand on that platform and do something about this. So we started the Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives. And tell us about the Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives. Well, I'm very proud to have started it with um, Robert and also with my mother, Nettie Washington Douglass who, by the way, is the person that brought the bloodlines uh, together of these families through the marriage of her, fa her, her father, who was Frederick Douglass's great-grandson, and her mother, who was Booker T. Washington's granddaughter. So Mom and I started this organization, and our mission in the beginning was twofold. It was the first, the obvious, and that's to carry on and perpetuate the legacies of our great ancestors. But the second part of what we do is raise awareness about this issue of human trafficking and the way that we felt the best way to educate the public is to start where education should start, and that's with young people. Mm -hmm. So you travel to schools across the country, <laughs> and you're on a mission to also get this in the curriculum. Tell us about that. I, I'm on a mission um, to reach as many schools as possible, and when we first started visiting schools in 2008, we said, let's go to schools named after Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington as a good starting point. Well, as it turns out, there are a lot of those schools, and I wound up literally wearing holes in my shoes visiting so many schools. So what we did was we needed to institutionalize what we were doing so that we could reach more students. So we wrote this curricula called History, Human Rights, and the Power of One. So we go into schools, a teacher can download this curriculum on our website, and the first part is history. So we talk about Frederick Douglass and the abolitionists, how they went about abolishing slavery, and then we transition into this modern-day human rights issue and that slavery still exists 
and we need modern day abolitionists to do exactly what frederick douglas did and that's to communicate the inhumanity of slavery to their communities in an effort to protect them young girls from becoming victims we can talk to young boys at an age when they're forming their identity about um, women's rights and making sure that the young boys are sensitive to women and girls so that they become a part of the solution and not a part of the problem and the curriculum is a service learning curriculum so there's always a service component attached so once the students have done all of this learning in the classroom then they go out in their community and they do service and that service is usually attached to raising awareness you're down here in the keys so is this something that we can maybe see happening in the future in our schools i, I hope so um, we are doing a big program in new york city right now um, the New York City Department of Education has approved our curriculum and we'll be bringing it to New York City public schools and we believe that that's a model um, for the rest of the country and of course each um, area is different in the needs that are in the area but it's something that I believe that we can bring here successfully there's a problem with this issue in every um, civilized and uncivilized country around the world including here in the United States and including here in the Florida Keys so as I've been here over the past couple of days people have expressed to me the need for having prevention education that's a that's a wonderful thing now I have to ask you before we go this morning you're on a mission to end modern-day slavery obviously you think education awareness prevention that's key do you think we will put an end one day to human trafficking I believe that we can put an end to it but the way that um, this movement if you can call it a movement has been operating it's really reactionary and what I mean by that is as human beings we tend to react with an abundance of heart so when we see somebody in need and we see somebody that's been victimized that's where our resources go that's where our human resources and our financial resources go but you're really operating in what I call disaster relief mode what we need to do and what our programs do is get to the root of the problem so that we can prevent a young person from ever knowing this in the first place and when you can bring this education to students to young people what we found in New York and other cities is that the community will come together um, law enforcement the organizations that are doing great work on the ground will work together to try and prevent it and once we can get the community to build this kind of safety net then then we can make efforts to really start to end this wonderful I think what you're doing is so amazing and I know your ancestors are smiling down on you thank you so much for being on with me this morning thank Ken. you Jenna I'm gonna take a quick break right now I'll be right back after these messages there's much more to come stay with me